Hey friends, happy Faith Friday. My guest today, Stada Inman, is a mom to three girls, a pastor's wife, a worship leader, and co-host of the podcast, A Cup of Sunrise, that she does each week with her husband, Joe. Stada gets very real today as she shares her personal story of how God redeemed her and changed her after a life of abuse and trauma. Her message today is one of hope and encouragement that you have great worth and value in God's eyes. She gives tips and suggestions so that you too can allow God to build up your confidence as a daughter of the King. Now, this is a bit longer of an episode, so you may want to multitask as you listen. And if you need to grab a fatigue freedom session, you have five more days to grab it at the half off price in celebration of my birthday. So go grab your session today to get some clarity on some specific struggles that you are having each day with consistent fatigue and low energy. We are getting into the holiday season and nobody has time to be tired. So let's find out what your specific triggers and causes are for being so tired and let's get you feeling better. Are you a Christian woman over 40 who is struggling with consistently low energy and fatigue? Are you tired of trying to navigate the ever-changing health chatter all around you? And do you wish there was a simple solution to just feeling good? Boy, do I see you and I hear you. Hi, I'm Michelle, and as a holistic health coach and fellow midlifer, I have realized the answer to our whole health concerns isn't in the online search bar, those fad diets, and endless exhausting workouts. Listen, beautiful mama, as the heartbeat of your home, you have spent your life caring for others well. So now is the time to take good care of yourself, get back your energy, and reclaim your entire health during this season. So if you are ready to stop striving and start thriving as your healthiest whole self, then you are in the right place. Grab your iced coffee, a notebook and pen, and let's treasure your wellness. Hi everyone, it's good to have you back here on the Treasured Wellness Show. Let me tell you about my guest today. I met Stada Inman about several months ago, and she is a mom of three girls. She just got married in October and became a pastor's wife. She's a worship leader as well as a podcaster all within the last year. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> Stada and Pastor Joe's podcast is called A Cup of Sunrise, and I have had the pleasure of coming on their show and chatting with them both. It is a fun, a really fun uh, video morning podcast, and I will share the links to that in the show notes. But I am so happy to chat with you today, Stada. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited, really excited to um, to talk with you and hopefully reach some of your listeners. Absolutely. Well, you know, you have a unique story and I would love, uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit, but since you are recently married to a pastor and you have kind of jumped head first into all the pastor wife things, how is it being a pastor's wife? You know, um, I, I thought immediately I was like, oh, and, and I was reading the questions out loud, uh, to my husband, Joe, and he heard this first question and he started laughing hysterically. Um, I can picture that. It's very busy. Um, being a pastor's wife is very busy. And I feel like I've been thrust into a position of responsibility, mm. um, not only to myself and not only to my husband, um, but to the people around me. Our um, our church congregation, if you will, is not just people we see at church. These are people that we see and talk to every day. They're friends of ours. They've, they've become family. And a lot of them are younger, um, both in age, and a lot of them are younger in their relationship with Christ. And uh, so I find myself um, being the mom, if you will, to most of them. And a, and a lot of them are women. So they feel more comfortable coming to me with questions that they normally might go to their pastor for. Um, so, yeah, I feel a huge responsibility to stay 
focused on God for myself so that I can lead them in the right direction. There is a, a new couple in our church who just got married and she's very young in age and in her relationship with Christ. And she's very um, without I, I don't want I don't want this to be taken in the in the wrong way, but she comes to me a lot for for even for little small things. And um, in the past, I've always not, I've not been very people person. <laughs> I've always been kind of stand alone, just want to be left alone, just leave me by myself and let me do my thing. But that's, I, I can't do that anymore. So I find myself at times trying to have a quiet time, but you know, my time's not just my time anymore. Mm. It's, mm. it's just, it, it really isn't. Um, and, and I feel, I feel a huge responsibility to my friends and my family um and even people i don't know i try to reach out on social socials as much as i can to spread the word um and, and that may just be because of my new relationship with god not specifically being a pastor's wife but i feel an urgency and a responsibility and i'm and i'm, I'm super busy you know we have service three days a week um, i also have a, a job that i have to do we um, are responsible for picking up most of the congregation because we have a van. So super busy, super busy, but yeah. I love it. What you were mentioning, it's like the Titus too, right? It's like the older women um, mentoring the younger women so that they can be built up and then they can also mentor the younger women too. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's that beautiful balance of the body all working together, all supporting each other and yeah. building up the body of Christ, building up the kingdom. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, that's Joe, Joe has preached a couple of times. Um, our walk as Christians isn't really about us. It's about everyone else. And it really is. And, and for a while, I thought well, that sounds kind of weird, but it really is. It really is. My relationship with God isn't just about me. It's about everybody else. So I try to stay focused on the Lord and listen to his word and read my Bible more so that when they do come to me, I'm, 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 I'm able I have the tools and the words to share with them, to help them in, in whatever they're needing help with at the time. Yeah, that's really important because, you know, we need to fill ourselves. It's like putting the oxygen mask on ourselves, right? At times we need to physically, emotionally, mentally do that, but we also need to be doing that regularly, spiritually, filling ourselves up yes. so that we can pour into others. So yeah, that's yes. beautiful. One yes. of our um, conversations that we had, Sada, we talked about trauma and how so many women are uh, dealing silently with trauma and their trauma stories. Um, and you did share with me a little bit about your trauma story and how it shaped you for many years with those feelings of worthlessness, like just feeling oh, yeah. less than, and oh, that's yeah. so common, right? That's such a common, uh, word, a theme of how women feel when they have experienced trauma. So, um, would you like to give us a little bit of the backstory and how God brought you this beautiful redemption story, how God brought you out of all of that? Absolutely. So my trauma started at a very young age in the home um, with my father. Um, and so, and, and I mean, very young and I never really gave it much thought, but I guess my, I, I guess he instilled in me that I was, um, made me feel like property, made me feel as though the way I looked, um, you, you know, my sexuality um, was really what, what made me, what defined me, um, my attractiveness or, you know, um, is what defined me and basically who I was to be as a woman. I didn't, my, my parents weren't, um, you know, Christians and I'm not even sure at the time if they were believers in, in a true sense. So there wasn't really, you know, there wasn't really a feeling of 
I guess, love, true love. So being, being conditioned um, to use my sexuality and my attractiveness at a very young age, I felt like that's what made me worthy. Um, and so it got to a point where um, as I grew up, I, I guess I defined myself as that. So it, it, it gave me a sense of better than, but at the same time, I felt worthless because if you didn't find me attractive or if you didn't want to um, have a sexual relationship with me because I was so pretty, then I, I, then I was worth nothing. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it does. It, and, it, and it kind of, it, 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 well, not kind of, it grew into, you know, that's who I became. That, that's who I became. Um, I thought by giving myself to a man, if you will, um, that was the way that I showed him I loved him. And that meant he loved me too. That is absolutely not the case at all whatsoever. And um, and I thought that was the greatest gift that I could give because that's really all I had to give was my sexuality, um, I guess. Um, and so because of the, feel, and, and of course I was bullied in school and, and you know, uh, things of that nature. Um, and because of my feelings of worthlessness and feeling like I wasn't worth anything except in a sexual object, I came to let men treat me however they wanted to um, in relationships and also during, this is getting kind of deep, and also during um, sexual activity um, because I felt like that's really all I was worth. So whatever you wanted to do to me, I would let you do that because I wasn't worth anything better. If you wanted to hit me or if you wanted to call me names or call me somebody else's name while I was sharing my body with you, that's what I would, I guess I embraced that because for some, for some reason I felt like that was all I was worth. But if you were doing that with me, that showed me that you loved me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's how Satan really used it to attack the mind for sure. I mean, yeah. he attacks our mind and, you know, he, he definitely had a field day, you know, with you during that time of your life, but, but He's God, good. right. But God exclamation but, point. But God, let me tell you what I have done a complete, uh, 360 with my life since I allowed God in my life. Um, I just want to, I just want to read this real quick. In Proverbs 18, 22, a man's greatest treasure is his wife. She is the gift from the Lord. Now, we don't really think about that um, in a sense that we know Adam was created first. And then what? God created Eve to give her to Adam. So we don't, and we, we all know the story, but we don't really think about it in that true sense that we are a gift. Um, it says here, a, a woman's worth to God. God created women as his image bearers to beautifully reflect his creativity, to nurture and to encourage those around her to reason and reflect and to confidently declare the goodness of God. We can't, we can't confidently declare the goodness of God if we are confident in ourself first. That's right. And, and, um, and God really instilled in me when I gave my life to him on September the 6th, only of last year, that, um, that, that confidence that I had been looking for my entire mm -hmm. life, ever since I was a little girl. And I guess because my trauma started at such a young age. I knew that I wanted to love. I knew that I had so much love inside me and I wanted to share that with other people. I remember when I would be getting bullied, um, you know, in junior high or whatever, 
And I didn't even really understand where this, these words were coming from or where this feeling would come in from, you know, because girls would want to have fist fights. And I remember saying to them, I'm not going to fight you because I wasn't put on this earth to fight. I was put on this earth to love. And I didn't even really understand that that was so true. And I knew that I had so much love that I wanted to give and I wanted to share. But because I'd never received the love that I felt like I wanted to give out, I didn't really know how to do it. So I used, I guess what my dad taught me to use was my body. So, yeah, a, a huge turnaround for me um, to realize that my worth, if I'm worth saving to God, if if first of all, he created me. So that, that's got to be something good. He didn't um, he didn't create me to share my body. He didn't create me to to allow people to belittle me um, and to do unthinkable things to me. He did create me to love because he loves me. And um, so so now I am able to share the love that God shares with me, with others in a completely different way, <laughs> in a completely, in a completely different way though. Right. And you're nurturing and supporting and just being there to just shape these new minds, you know, and through your story, you're able to really help other women who have gone through a similar or regardless, we all have some sort of trauma in our life, period. Right. I mean, we all do, whether it's, you know, just from just last month, or if it's from our childhood, and, and we can experience multiple traumas. So yeah. it's so beautiful that, you know, God has turned, you know, what, what Satan meant for evil, God may, made it good. And he, yeah. he made it very good, because not only do you have that beautiful redemption story, but you are now taking everything you've learned, everything you are learning and gleaning because you're hungry, you know, you're yeah. hungry for um, just building your confidence in Christ and you're sharing that with other women. And we need that. We absolutely need a body of believers that are building up and supporting, not tearing down and not staying silent, not, yeah. you know, being afraid to share because that, I think you and I talked about this too, the unspoken prayer request, right? Because we don't trust really that our prayer request will stay private and it will just yeah. become between these women and God and that they will truly pray for us. And that's a problem in the church, all across the church, of course. So yes. you in my in my previous in my previous relationship with my first husband, um, I that's where I learned untrust because I had girlfriends who were like, "Yeah, girl, you're my bestie." Yeah, but they really weren't. They really weren't there to encourage and to build, um, you know, basically a a, a knife in the back when you turned around. So. I had huge trust issues and it, it was, it was very difficult for me for all of my life to find someone that I could cling to that I could trust. So I really just kind of felt alone. I really yeah. just kind of felt like I was alone. And at the, at some point I realized, well, I can't share this with them because they're probably the one, you know, doing it or they're going to use it as well. And, and, you know, and that happened with, with, you know, boyfriends and female friends um, that they would take things that I would bring to them in confidence, looking for support and encouragement and just use it against me. And I hear women, I, I hear a lot of women now when they're talking to me about their relationship and the state that it's in, come up with excuses for the behavior. And, and I want to say this boldly. And I want it, I want the ladies out there to know that I mean it, it truly in this sense. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. If you're not happy 
if you're not being encouraged and uplifted, if you don't feel good about the state of your relationship, rather it be with a, with a man or rather it be with a female friend, then it's wrong. It's wrong. If, if you come away with a, with a feeling of sadness or um, a, a letdown in, in some sort of way, if you're not feeling happy and encouraged and uplifted by any relationship, by all means, please get away. Please get away from it because it's just, it's really not worth it. Your life is meant for something and it's definitely not meant for that. God did not put you and he did not, he did not create you first of all to allow yourself to stay in a situation where you're not being encouraged and uplifted and, and with joy. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 11 through 2, to rely on each other as equal partners in life and to respect one another. Um, and if you're not getting the respect, but you're expected to give it, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's a relationship not from God and you just, you need to step away. I, I, I did a, when I gave my testimony to a church, um, our sister church in Oklahoma, I was speaking mostly to the young ladies and, and, and I stand by this. And now I know not every relationship is going to be of God. I understand that there, there are non-believers or non-Christians out there who are, who are in relationships. But if, if I, I stand beside this, if you've got to have God in your relationship first, I, I believe that God should come first. And that he should be the overseer of your relationship. And um, I believe that can help shape, um, you know, the state of the relationship, if you will. But without, without respect, without joy, without encouragement, again, whether it be in a, in a friend type relationship or a, a you know, a male female relationship, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. You've got to have joy in your life. And that's, that's, that's your whole purpose and your reason for being here is to spread the love and the joy that God has put on our hearts. And if you're not feeling that, you can't share it. That's true. And God will move people out of our lives for a, during a specific season, you know, that has happened to me many, 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 many times, you know, having those girlfriends that are bashing their husbands all the time or whatever, like, God has moved a lot of people out of my life. And I've heard other women say the same thing. I don't understand. Like we were really good friends. And then all of a sudden we don't talk anymore. And I've tried and it's like, well, God has moved, you know, you're at a different spiritual level and that's yes. okay. That's, that's where God has you. That's where you're supposed to be. And so it's, you know, mourn the loss, but keep going forward because he's got other amazing uh, women in the body of Christ for you. And, yeah. you know, that just kind of, it, it kind of um, segues really into my next question that I have for you about, you know, so when women are, when we are trying to recover from trauma, whatever form of trauma, we are really unless we're doing the deep dive with various different therapy modalities and all of that, we can often feel so alone as we, we talked about. So let's say that these women are going through the modalities. They are actually putting them, they're trying really hard to take care of their emotional, mental health. They're trying to help with their trauma to get past it, to recover, to heal from it. But why are women who are going through all of that energy, why do they still struggle so much to see the importance of really, truly caring for themselves well? Why are they still putting themselves on the back burner? Why you know, I, I think because it comes to a point in your life where you think that's where you're supposed to be, or that's where you belong, or even again, as I said before, that you're not worth anything better, you know, and a lot of women and and I, and I speak from experience at some point we just don't even really know how you know where to start where to start how to focus on ourselves rather than everything else that's um either going on or has gone on and i think it's important 
to, first of all, pull yourself away from the negative things. And again, it may be difficult um, and it can be downright, you know, it can feel downright impossible at times. But like you said before, you know, like when you go on an airplane, they tell you if the oxygen masks fall, that you're to put yours on first and then help your neighbor. And that's so true in life. We have to take care of ourselves first so that we're able to take care of others. Even, you know, moms, if you're if you're beat down and tired and sick, you know, you can't properly care for your children if you're not properly cared for. You have to heal yourself and be okay for you. So, you know, I'm a CNA. I work in nursing homes. And if if I'm too exhausted or if I'm sick, if I just feel bogged down, I find it difficult. I have a difficult time caring for those people that I'm supposed to care for because I haven't properly taken the time to heal myself. If I don't stretch and exercise and work out, I have a difficult time lifting the, you know, the man who can't lift himself. So it's very important. And, you know, it's very important to take the time to physically and mentally care for yourself in, you know, in whatever way that's best for you, whether it be in the word or, or physically, you know, walking, which helps with, um, you know, with a lot of issues and, and to understand that you are worth being taken. You are worth taking care of, especially by yourself, especially by yourself. If you don't feel the worthiness that, you know, that somebody else should be able to take care of you, by all means, you should know for yourself that you're worth stopping for a minute and, you know, taking some time to meditate for yourself. So, yeah, it's important to pull yourself away from the things that are negative and not just for a day, not just for a few minutes, not just for a week, but permanently. Like I said before, if you're not being encouraged and if you're not being uplifted, if you don't find joy in talking to the friends that you talk to, step away, step away from that. Because I, I learned something um, in a counseling session some time back. If nothing changes, and I say this a lot, if nothing changes, then nothing changes. You have to be willing to make those changes so that your life can begin to change. So if you're staying around the negative Debbie Downers, if you're staying in the negative relationship, if you're staying in, in, in the trauma, if you will, rather you're physically still in it or you're living in it in your head, if you're staying in those places, then you're not going to be able to move forward. So I think it's important to understand that you have to make the changes for yourself so that, you know, so that you can begin to grow and um, and get better for yourself. And, you know, I saw a thing before on a social media where uh, there, there's a girl and she says, you know, to her friends, don't come to me for advice unless you want to hear God, because I'm going to bring up God. I'm going to mention God. And, you know, that. I have, I, I stand by that. I have, I live that, you know, I live that if somebody comes to me, well, have you spoke to God about it? Have you prayed about it? You know. <laughs> so he really is our strength. He really is our strength. He's my strength. And, and, and I hope and encourage you to allow him to be your strength as well, because you will be very surprised the life change when you allow God into your heart and allow him to to do his part in your life. Amen. You know, that, that reminds me of Matthew six thirty three, right? But seek first the kingdom, kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other yes. things will be added. Yes. All things is all things, not all things. some things, not a couple things, not the, not, not a few things over here. You don't, you know, he doesn't pick and choose all things will be given to you. That's right. I just, had a, I just had a friend bring me bring me to that the other day. I love it. It's one of my well, I have so many favorites, but yeah. it's one that I am trying to I have been keeping in the forefront and and it's not even really been hard for me to keep in the forefront. Like Holy Spirit just keeps bringing it to my mind in certain Yes. Situations. Yes, and in my life in my life lately too, uh Joe's preached on it a couple of times and it seems like everywhere I go 
there, there that is. I have a, I have a, a gal staying with us right now who's going through some issues. So we're letting her stay with us. And she came to me and Joe the other day and she said, you know, and she grew up in church, but she, you know, she got away. And she said that scripture has just been in her mind her entire life. And she kept thinking about it and she kept thinking about it and she couldn't figure out why she couldn't make those changes. Why, you know, why the things that she knew needed to happen couldn't happen. And she said it was there all along staring her in the face because she was not seeking first the kingdom of God. I know some people may look at us like, oh, it's just Bible thumpers. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll be gladly, I'll be happy to be called a Jesus freak because for me, the change is night and day. For me, the change is night and day. You know, the day before I gave my life to the Lord and the day that I gave my life to the Lord are completely different days. I became a completely different person. The way I felt inside was a completely different person. And he can do that. He wants to do that for you. He Absolutely. wants to do that for you. Amen. We just need to seek him first. And, you know, yes. this is something that I talk about with my clients and I talk about, well, this is why in my raising the bar for wellness program, the spiritual support is first. We need to seek God first before we take care of the physical, emotional, mental because then we will have the change that we're looking for. If yes. we are trying to do it in our own strength, like you said earlier, like we need to rely on God and his strength because then we will get the victory. If we yes. keep trying to sloth through this life, doing these things, looking for these quick fixes and these, you know, just one size fits all, it's not helping. It's not, it's not happening for you. And so seek God first. I yes, love- I, I can, I can, I can attest to this. The day before I gave my life to the Lord, Joe and I were actually breaking up. We, we weren't going to be together. And I knew in my heart and in my soul that this was where I was supposed to be. And like I said before, because I had a lack of love of the correct love growing up, I just knew my whole life, I was seeking a love that was, that was palpable if that makes sense. I just knew that there was something out there. So I was trying to get it from him, trying to get it from him, this friend, this friend, um, I was on my way to the grocery store to get um, groceries for Joe's birthday dinner. And that's the moment I gave my life to the Lord because I had just, you know, we were breaking up. My life was going to be over. The, the man that I, you know, loved dearly with all my heart was now going to not be a part of my life. And I started crying and I started praying and I said, you know, I, I can't remember the, the, the words exactly, but I'm sure it was, you know what, God, I can't. I just can't do this. I just can't do this anymore. I need you. I need you to take over. I need you to really, I just wanted him to use me as the puppet, you know, the little puppets on the string. I just knew that the way that I had been doing this for 54 years <laughs> just was not working. And that very moment I felt the Holy spirit come over me. And at that very moment, I no longer cared. And this may sound harsh, I no longer cared if Joe and I weren't going to be together because immediately that instant I felt, I felt the love that I had been searching to find my entire life. And it was, um, it was life-changing. It was life-changing. I knew that, that the one who mattered most loved me beyond compare. And it, and it did, it just really didn't matter anymore. All of the, all of the trauma that I had gone through, all of the anger that I was currently living in and all of the love that I had been searching for my entire life was right there. And it had been there all along. He'd just been there, been there waiting for me. Sometimes I think, man, I wish you would have came down and bopped me in the head, <laughs> but it's in his time. So. <laughs> exactly you know he's <laughs> such a loving patient god and um your story is so beautiful stada thank you so much for sharing that with us and i just know that it has touched somebody um who really desperately needed to hear your story today and your your um encouragement so as we are closing can you just leave one final word of encouragement to our listeners a treasured truth Yes. And I wrote it down and, um, 
you know, I, I was, I was, when I, when I, when you asked me, um, on the, on the message, if I could give one treasure truth at the end, first, I was going to say, you know, seek first the kingdom of God, because that is really most important. But I, I like to use that in conjunction with this, seek first the kingdom of God and all uh, these things will be giving unto you. For I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And you can find that in Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, because really, God created you for a purpose. And that purpose is not to be stuck in the mire where you feel like that's where you belong. You know? So if you do seek first the kingdom of God and remember he has a plan for you, a plan for, for good, a plan for joy, uh, a plan for true happiness. And it's out there. If you will just allow him to be God in your life, you'll find that joy. That is beautiful. That is a perfect way to end because it is so true. Those two go absolutely perfect together. I would Highly recommend if you are struggling with feeling um, unworthy, feeling of uh, just not feeling that inner peace that you are worthy in God's eyes. I would write so those worthy. two verses out side by side and post them on your bathroom mirror and repeat that out loud to yourself every single day. You know, sometimes yes. we have to do that before we actually yeah. believe it, you know, let God's word right. soak into the very fibers of our being. Yes, yes, we do. We do. And I, I you know, I thank God every day for putting me in the position that I'm in and, um, and bringing me around. Um, and I want to encourage your listeners to just allow God into your life. And I don't know if it's, you know, if it's uh, allowed, but if, if there's anybody out there who, would like somebody to talk to I'm available I, I, I'm I'm available to talk to I'm very reachable um and open to to talk to anybody who feels like they need somebody that they can trust and somebody they can talk to absolutely um thank you for for that offer too and I was going to ask you um I have such enjoyed our conversation but I wanted to ask you how can my listeners get in touch with you do you have a special um, email or a special link that I can put in the show notes for them. You can definitely give them my personal email address, which is statasings at gmail.com. That's S T A D A S I N G S at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook, Stata Inman. I'm on Instagram. I'm on uh, Snapchat. Um, I'm on, they can reach me through um, Axe Media Group through the podcast that we do. Um, if you, if you want to reach me, you can reach me. I assure you, if you, if you don't remember or didn't write it down and aren't sure you can reach out to Michelle and she can contact me for you and, and, and link us up together. Just, just reach, just reach out. Don't, 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 don't stay in a place where you feel like you're alone because I promise you, you are not alone. You are not alone. You don't have to be. That's right. That's absolutely right. Take that first step. Absolutely. Yes. And I will yes. have all of those links um, in the show notes um, of how they can get in touch with you. And yes, definitely go to Axe Media Group and check out their amazing uh, podcast, A Cup of Sunrise. And it's you can so find Facebook too. So it's it's really, it's a delight, actually. I always- Thank you. I just see you too. Was so fun. Your your chemistry and your energy is just so funny together. So we and have I, a lot of fun. It was so we fun when I came fun. on there. So, <laughs> and yeah, we'd like I can to have you back as well. We'd like to have you back. I'll do it. I'll do it in a heartbeat. It was so much awesome. fun. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much, Sada. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you staring, uh, sharing your story. I know that was tough, but um, it, I know God will use it as well. And he's using you in such a mighty way. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, friend. I hope it challenged you, encouraged you and stretched you in some way. 
If it did, would you stop right now and share this episode with someone else who has been praying for a breakthrough in her whole health? Also, it would bless me so much if you would pop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a quick review to let me know how much you are liking the content and to help other women just like you find the show. Treasured Wellness can also be found on Christian Mix 106 and Radio Free America online streaming radio stations. So check out those two amazing platforms. One more thing, come on over to our Facebook community, Holistic Health for Christian Women Over 40. I would love to see you there. Until next time, remember, you are a beautiful treasure.